mean he'll be master in his own house too. Rain and wind, but also a very warm-hearted farewell marked the departure of Princess Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh from Portugal Cove near St John's, Newfoundland. There was a gale blowing out at sea and their Royal Highnesses had quite a stormy passage in the ferry boat Manico. They were escorted by Newfoundland fishing boats on the trip which took them several miles out to the Empress of Scotland waiting for them in Conception Bay. From the bridge of the liner, they waved their last goodbye after the tremendously successful tour. The scene changes to Liverpool, which had the pleasure of extending Britain's first welcome home. greeting was given by Lord Derby, Lord Lieutenant of Lancashire, and the people of Liverpool, who had not, after all, had the chance of cheering the royal couple when they left for Canada, made up for it now. A brief visit to the town hall brought another ovation. Then the drive was continued to the cathedral. It was fine weather and there was a grand welcome all the way. At the cathedral, the princess gave permission for the full peal of bells to ring for the first time. Incidentally, they're the heaviest and highest ringing peal in the world. Afterwards, another drive through Liverpool to Lime Street Station for the journey to London by train. from Lime Street to Euston, where the Queen with Princess Margaret and Prince Charles were waiting. The young prince, who'd just celebrated his third birthday, carried out his handshaking duties most sedately. But I venture to doubt whether his mind was really on the job. Certainly it'd be natural enough if he were pretty excited. At last, the great moment came, and the train drew in. Affectionate family greetings followed, but now when the climax of a thrilling day was reached, Prince Charles evidently began to feel a little shy. Perhaps that was natural too, in front of so many people. The Mounties, whom the princess had invited to Britain, now stepped to the platform and possibly Prince Charles was wondering what kind of soldiers they were. The Queen made a special point of talking to them before the royal party left for Buckingham Palace. London, unfortunately, had had a whole day of wind and rain, rather like Newfoundland, but London has completely ignored the weather in their keenness to greet the heiress presumptive and her husband on their return. All Britain knew how brilliantly they'd carried out their visit to the Dominion, and London, like Liverpool, seized the chance of making this perfectly clear. Light was fading fast as they reached the palace, but the crowds caught a glimpse of the royal couple on the balcony, this time with Princess Anne as well as Prince Charles, and the cheering broke out afresh. Mm -hmm. 